Welcome back to Simply Southern. We've got Sid Phelps with us today to answer your gardening question. And this time it's kind of the most asked questions. So Sydney, the first one that we have is from Facebook. Sharon Townsend, it says, she's excited to have strawberries this year. How can she keep the birds from eating them? Okay, strawberries, uh, anything you're dealing with a red fruit, birds are always going after them. The easiest way that you can handle this is put some kind of protective netting around it. Um, you can find that at your local hardware store. Uh, just drape it around there on the outside so that they can't get to the fruit. That's gonna be the biggest thing. We got a question from our Instagram Instagram account from H Walters93. What's the best way to keep away pesky bugs slash pests that love vegetable plants? Well, there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, when you're dealing with the garden, mulch, keeping the garden clean is one of the, the easiest things to do. It's a little bit more time intensive, but the cleaner it is, the, the more they're gonna stay away because you're on top of it. Really, if you're trying to keep out the biggest pest, Fencing uh, is going to be obviously the, the biggest thing. Sometimes it's a little bit more uh, not as price conscious to do. But a lot of the small things from chipmunks and those, the biggest thing to keep them away from your fresh fruit is to make sure you're in the garden and that you're constantly harvesting. Sometimes it's still going to be difficult to still keep squirrels and rabbits at bay. So always make sure that you're harvesting uh, as soon as the, the plants start to produce. All right, so next question is from Roberta McClellan from Facebook. She says, what is the best method for deterring squash bugs or getting rid of them once they get a foothold? Once, the, the easiest way to deter them is to use some kind of trap crop. So planting certain flowers in between it, um, that, that's the easiest way to kind of deter them across. Uh, if you're dealing with any kind of, you know, uh, worms or, or something trying to cut, you can use aluminum foil around the base of the plant so they can't bite in. Uh, the biggest thing you're going to run into is, is basically more squash borers and for that again it's looking at harvesting. Make sure that you can uh, you can use different type of, of, of herbicides if that's something that you're not wanting to necessarily get into then definitely make sure you're staying on top of harvest especially with squash because it produces so fast you want to make sure that you're there every day. So we've got a question from Marley Moore. What are the best veggies and herbs to grow in a confined area like an apartment patio? Yeah, so veggies and herbs, you've got plenty of opportunities there. Um, so uh, it doesn't matter how big or small of a space you're working with, herbs work well everywhere. Uh, so as long as you have enough place to put a, a good sized container or multiple containers, you can grow just about any herb. The biggest thing on that is making sure that you have access to water and that they're getting sunlight. Uh, if you want to get into the vegetable side of things, you can do uh, pretty much anything run the gamut, but you really have to pay attention to the variety. So if you're doing tomatoes, you want a bush or determinate variety. Peppers work well. Um, you want to make sure you have a large container for that. You can put one or two to a container. And then from there, you can even do uh, cucumbers and squash, but make sure that you're looking at bush varieties that are going to stay uh, in that same area. It's going to get a little bit crazy, but if you want to try it, it's still an option. All right. And our last one from Facebook is Janice Marsk. And she says her tomatoes turn black on the bottom and start rotting before they're fully ready to pick. What can she do to stop that? Typical blossom men rot, nine times out of 10, that's either gonna be calcium deficiency or overwatering. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet that she's using this in a container, it's probably overwatering, make sure that they're drilling holes and also feel the soil before you ever start watering. Get your hand two to three inches in there and if you're still feeling moisture, don't water the plants. Um, calcium is the biggest thing. You can use uh, CalMag, you can use eggshells, That'll build up the calcium and solve that, but blossom and rot, unfortunately, that's the biggest cul uh, culprit for it. All right, Sydney, thank you again so much for all that information. Now, if you have a question about vegetable and herb gardening, send Sydney an email at simplysouthern at alifarm.com. We'll send you a nice gift if he answers it on the air. Thanks for watching Simply Southern today, but we gotta go. Next week, we'll find out how a weed that some say is poisonous became the star of a North Alabama food festival. And we'll begin our annual series spotlighting the top Alabama young farmers for the year. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. We'll see you next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.